Hey guys, Hayden Simmons here from The Portrait Guru and in today's video I'm going to share how I created this portrait drawing from start to finish with this analysis and narration so you can follow along at home. I start off by drawing the cranium so I draw a circle which represents this and a vertical line through this circle. I then draw a horizontal line which indicates the eyes and then another horizontal line which indicates the nose and also the hairline. I then place another horizontal line which indicates the chin. From there I start to draw the outline of the face, keeping my sketching lines really loose and light as I'm going to be drawing on top of these lines in the future. So I'm just sketching out exactly where each of these elements sit on the face, just so I can get all the proportions and the facial features correct before moving on to the details. I firstly look at the angle of the nose, placing the planes of the nose as indicated here. So the nose has a top plane and a bottom plane. I'm looking at the bridge of the nose at this point and basically trying to sculpt the face moving forwards. If you think about planes of a face, there's one on the front and two on the side it will really help your drawings. So I'm basically trying to sculpt this face. So I'm using these indicator marks to draw out the facial features. I then go on to the mouth part of the drawing, looking at the placement and also the angle of the drawing. So where does it sit in line with the facial features? So how does the, the mouth sit in relation to the nose and also to the eyes? I keep looking at the reference photo and also my drawing, just so it's all accurate and I'm getting all the right details in place. I use rough guides within my drawing. As you can see, I just basically make it really light and loose, making sure everything from the nose and also where you see there is all accurate. Just taking my time and really trying to depict each of these facial features correctly. I then move on to the eyes of the portrait, which is a crucial element, making sure they look the right way. And then moving on to the outline of the forehead, making sure the eyebrows also sit on the correct angle. The hair is very flowing in this photograph, so we want to capture that within this drawing as well. I recorrect some of my previous mistakes, especially with the angle of the chin there and making sure the jawline is correct. I then draw a indicator for the iris, making sure everything lines up. As you can see, I just use my pencil to make sure my angles are all correct in relation to the photograph. You can do this by putting your pencil up horizontally or vertically to the photograph and see where elements of those facial features line up against each other. It's a really handy tip going forwards. I then go back into the nose, making sure that angle is correct and also those planes are also correct as well. Adding things like the iris details and also other elements of the eye. I then get into more of the details going forwards and start to add subtle details. So for this part, I'm just making sure that the angle of this mouth is correct and also the expression of it is also correct as well. This part of this process is, like I say, very loose. It's foundational, just looking at the structure before going on to the details. I then flip my image upside down 
and also my drawing upside down as well as this way you can notice all the errors within your drawing it's a really handy tip so I can see that maybe some of my eyes are not correct there with the other eye I'm bringing it a bit further up as it's a bit too low down within that right eye using my pencil to see how those line up and it's a really good tip going forward so if you want to notice any mistakes that you have or you don't, can't notice any mistakes within your drawing definitely turn it upside down it's a great way to see any errors and then go back into the nose adding more details to the bottom of that plane and just looking at that mouth again I think in hindsight that right eye should be a bit lower down and the left eye should be a bit higher up as I can notice even more mistakes by looking at this drawing with a fresh pair of eyes I then look at the top of this model indicating the neck as well and then using light pencil pressure to indicate the clothing and the collar again going back into the the forehead making sure each of these stages are all correct in place like i was saying before i definitely noticed some mistakes of this one the eyes i think could be a bit adjusted i think the nose could be a bit more angled down towards that right and also think that mouth could be a bit bit lower down on the right there's definitely errors that i can see and this is another tactic that you can employ into your drawings so you can also turn it upside down but also if you want to see any errors i suggest you taking a break maybe for a day or two or a few hours and then coming back to that drawing then it basically refreshes your mind and you can see exactly all the errors that you previously couldn't see as your mind just gets too used to that drawing i definitely recommend taking breaks and coming back to a drawing with a fresh pair of eyes and then draw extra details i'm pressing a bit more firmly now on the drawing and seeing where the ears line up in relation to the facial features and indicating things like the hair and also the chin you can see most of my drawing is pretty much all sort of straight lines this makes sure i'm not getting too much into the details going forwards i then finish up with drawing upside down just indicating here the eyes before moving on to the fun part which is using color I then use these brush pens which are fantastic, do recommend them, I'll put a link in the description below. I start with the eyes, so this is using the dark blue of this colour set. I'm basically indicating all the darks with this colour. So if you'll notice in the reference photo, the iris and also parts of the eye and also the eyebrows are quite dark I then use a Posca pen which you can see here using the bright colored pink to indicate the eyes moving further down the face with this vibrant color I then use yellow Posca pen which indicates the light part of that nose as you can see the tones are really building up now and making this drawing come to life I then indicate the yellow around the outline of the forehead just colouring the light part of this forehead as you can see the forehead is pretty lit up the side of the nose is also quite lit up and also underneath the nose as well on the left which I'm indicating here with yellow you don't always have to represent faces or figures with traditional colors. I always seem to use vibrant colors within my work 
for you. You can also do the same or you can use any colors that you want. Just think of colors as tones going forwards. So I'm indicating here the light parts of this face. So that is the forehead, the bridge of the nose and also the side of that face there. I'm using a thick Oscar pen for this part. which is nine millimeters in thickness. And then going back into the right eye and indicating the eyebrows of the face using the blue like the other eyebrow. And then using the blue within the eye itself as well. So this complements the other eye. And there's also a dark color as well. So as you'll notice from the photograph and like I was saying previously, the dark part of that photograph is the eyes, the nostrils, the eyebrows, part of the mouth and also the hair. So I'm indicating all those dark areas of the photograph with this dark blue. So I've drawn the eyebrows and the eyes and now going into the nostrils and also the sides of the nose. So this is the dark part of this image. And I'm using that blue to show those dark areas. I'm now going down into the, the chin of this portrait. I then take a bold move and use red for the chin. It's quite a dark area for the chin. However, it's not as dark as say the eyes of the piece. I try to keep to a limited color palette. So generally throughout this portrait drawing I will use yellows blues pinks and also reds I'm using a Posca pen here making sure all that juicy ink comes out being quite loose and expressive just showing the 3dness of that neck you can see the portrait is really coming to life now you can see the dark areas the lights and also the mid tones which I've used the red for. So then using those brush pens again for the cheek and under the mouth. This is a really fun part of the drawing, going into the mouth, using that red again, indicating the lips. As you can see, I like to draw using the limited color palette, like I was saying previously, but I like to dot these colors around the page so it moves the eye around the page as well. So I'll use it for the mouth. I'll use this red for the neck and also the cheek. And I'll probably use it somewhere else just so it leads the eye around the image. So then start to fill that cheek with the red color. Keep looking at the photograph as I can see that some of that cheek isn't all in darkness. You've got some light tones within that cheek. So I'm going back into the brush pens, which is perfect for describing and drawing hair, indicating the swells and the expressiveness and the volume of that hair with the brush part of the pen. Starting from the crown and where the, the hair sits, using expressive lines going around that hair. sweeping around the ear, not worrying too much about the details at this stage, just blocking in all those colors before going on to the details. You can see they start to overlap one another. I twist and also rotate my drawing. I also make sure it's comfortable for my drawing. So if I'm getting a bit of an awkward angle, especially for that hair, I rotate the paper just to make it more comfortable and to make sure that my line quality is the best it can be. I then indicate the under part of the ear as it's in darkness and then start to show the details of that ear. Again, using blue as it's a dark color and then using the same blue inside the mouth as again it's quite a dark area
keep looking at your drawing if you're following along at home and then I'm going around the neck and also parts of that eye. I grab the pink brush pen and draw around the eye so it matches the left hand eye and use this color as a mid tone. So I'm showing the shadow from that right side of the nose. Then I use the same color for the background. As I want there to be a bit of a contrast between the yellow used as the highlight of the side of the face and neutral tone of the pink for the background. So I'm just being very loose within the background using some hatching layers being quite expressive. I grab the Posca pen yellow just to show some more of the light indicators of the light parts of the face, especially that cheek, the bottom or the top of that chin and also some of that forehead. As you can see, I'm being quite loose again with my brush strokes, not getting too caught up in the details at this stage. That fun part comes a little bit later. I notice some of the light parts are in the right side of that neck. Just keep looking at your photograph and just seeing where all the lights and the darks sit. I keep swapping between all the colors. I sometimes do get a little bit bored by just using one color alone. And I do seem to swap and change the colors that I'm using. I'm going back into the pink, that mid-tone pink and a Posca pen, which I'm using here. So this is the side of the face, as you can tell. Not that dark, but it's a mid-tone sort of color there. Using the pink for the bottom, plane of the nose again it's not that dark but it needs to represent the darkness of that plane there so pink is a good one to use and then underneath those lips i love using bright colors within my work if you haven't already have seen and then using the pink for the top of that chin. Like I was saying previously, you can see how the portrait comes to life now. I'm going back into the hair using the blue Posca pen, looking at those details and filling in any holes or details that I can. This is definitely one of the funnest parts of any portrait drawing as all the foundations and most of the lights and darks have now been established. And now you can really get into the nitty gritty of the portrait. So I'm drawing things like the eyebrows and also like things like hair strands and also other details of that hair. Again, being pretty loose in my strokes and then going back into that hair beside the ear. So I'm making sure all of the white is taken up by color. So just using that pink again for the side of the face. So now you can tell which side of the face is illuminated, that left-hand side, and which part is in darkness, that right-hand side. Using the pink for the neck, and also I'll use that pink elements of the ear and also the clothing so this is a good opportunity to show you that I've used only pretty much three colors three or four colors go forwards blue pink red and yellow so yellow red and pink are all in the same spectrum and then the blue is used as a nice color complement so you can do this or think about this with your own drawings, which colors are you going to use? 
maybe you can choose a few complementary colors and a few colors which are on the same spectrum or you can follow my sort of color theory here maybe you can choose things like yellow blue green and then a complement or an adjacent of red for example there's many colors that you can choose from you can definitely choose your own and experiment yourself i'm now using the brush pen again however i'm using the other side of the brush pen as one side has the brush and the other side has this finer line that you can use and it's a brilliant set so i definitely recommend this brush set out i'm going back into the nose parts now just indicating all those nice details i'm looking at the sides of the nose just making sure all those nice details are being represented and then things like above the eye underneath the eye and just making sure that every stroke represents a 3d nature to the drawing and then doing exactly the same for the the right hand eye looking at the eyelashes the eyebrows just making some more hairs and some more details of that one underneath and above the eye as well you can see i'm using a sort of curved nature to my strokes and now you can sense that eyeliner around her eyes in my drawing i want there to be more of a hard edge on the side of the face so i draw a subtle line i'm using the side of the pen here for the side of that face and then going back into the nose and also the eyes I definitely flick between uh, one thing to the next. I can definitely notice that within my drawings, but it seems to work for me. Adding more hairs to the hairline and then adding more darkness or shadows to that bottom part or that neck as I don't think the red is quite dark enough to show that. Being pretty loose here with my mark making, just making sure all those different marks are representing something which is in 3D and then indicating some of the hair behind her face as you can see it's not really a part of that photograph but I wanted to add it in into the drawing and uh, I felt like it was missing from the photograph make sure you can definitely take some artistic license with your drawing if you don't like a particular part or you want to exaggerate a part of a photograph you don't have to literally copy it you can definitely make it your own so if you want to add more hair you want to make the hair have more volume you can definitely add that in or if you want to say add more details to the eyes you want to have more more eyelashes you want to make the lips a little bit bigger or you want to bring more focus to the lips you can definitely do that make sure the drawing is your own and if you don't like a particular part or the photograph, just change it. That's the beauty of art. There's no right or wrong. Again, I'm using the other side of the brush pen, just making sure the shadows of that eye are indicated within the eye itself. Again, being pretty expressive with the side of the face. I just wanted to make it a bit darker to show the lightness and the darkness of the piece. Sometimes being pretty hard with my pressure and then going lighter for other parts so i'm using the lighter pressure in the lighter part so the yellow and then a harder pressure within the darker parts at the side of the face just want to add a bit of yellow to the background and also overlapping some of that hair just to make it a bit more expressive thinking about how it overlaps subtly that ear it's not really shown within that photograph but I don't want it to add it in. The clothing is pretty much in, in light and it's pretty light itself. So I'm using that yellow again for that part, less the sleeve, the shirt itself, and then also the background. You can really see a difference now between the background, that mixture of pink and yellow with the yellow of the face or the side of the face again using red the side plane of the face before moving on to that neck so i'm just basically going around and around this face 
bringing some parts out, making some parts darker and making some parts a bit lighter. Using the same colors throughout, I'm not introducing any other colors into this stage of the drawing, just using those limited color palettes here. I don't need to bring any more colors into it as I have a yellow for the lights, I have a mid-tone for the red and the pink and then a dark using the blue. So it's just using those limited color palettes. Going into the side of face and then using a combination of red and also blue. So I'm using the red on top of the blue here and this it making an even darker tone. So you can definitely do this within your drawings if you feel that some of your drawings aren't dark enough you can definitely do this by just overlapping your marks onto one another i then go on to the colored pencil stage i'm using generally the same hues and colors as the first stage but i just wanted to bring out the the shadows a little bit more to this piece that's why i brought them into the process so I'm overlapping or using the colour pencils within the side of the nose there and underneath. I wanted to make the eyes just a little bit darker just to bring out those highlights. And I feel like this combination of brush pens, Posca pens and also colour pencils is a great way to go. I wanted to add more depth to that background and to really make the side of that face of the yellow really stand out. So I'm just making this a little bit darker, adding some more tones to that side of the face, just softening that combination or that transition from the yellow to the pink. Again, adding red, or using exactly the same colors as I had for the first half an hour or so, going back into the, the lips, and just covering all those white spaces that you can see within the piece. I don't want any white spaces, just want all, all color and all vibrancy. I'm flicking between color pencils and also the brush pens, just seeing where I can exaggerate the piece and just make it a lot more concrete. I feel like the, the neck could be a bit darker and just using the color pencils to make it a bit a bit more vibrant, a bit darker, and to add more depth to the piece. Remember that if you don't like any part of your drawing process, you can always change it, you can always erase, you can always add more materials or mediums. If you don't like how it's going, definitely change it. I'm now introducing more of a darker sort of tone, and this is using a dark purple. I know I said before that I'm just trying to stick to the same sort of color palette. However, I just wanted to make it even darker and but not using a, a dark black fineliner or colored pencil here. And so I'm using the same sort of coloring. So I'm using purple, which is a combination of red and blue. So it's still on the same spectrum. I then use a black fine liner, which I'll also put in the description. It's a fantastic piece of kit, this one. And now going into the details. So everything is pretty much in place. Got the lights, got the docks, got everything all covered. I wanted to use this brush pen just to bring out all those lovely details into the piece. So things like the nose, the eyes. How can I make the eyes a bit more bit more engaging and stand out a bit more. Sides of the face, the lips, and underneath and inside the lips, the eyebrows, and also things like the eyelashes. So this pen is fantastic. It varies in line weight, depending on your pressure that you place on the page. Adding even more details there, making sure all of it is 3D in nature, and using the very tip of that pen. Adding more hairs and details to that hair. Being pretty expressive again with my marks, not copying the photograph completely. 
and trying to make this drawing my own. I really liked how that hair overlaps the ear, so I wanted to really exaggerate that. As you can see, I'm pressing quite firmly on the page there around the ear, so it, may, it goes from a thin mark to a nice fat and bold mark. We're pretty much coming to the closing parts now of this drawing, adding some more details to the hairline. I'd love to know what you think about this drawing please do give me a comment below with how you got on following my drawing and also how you got on with your own drawing going forwards i'd love to hear from you or if you have any comments or questions do feel free to comment below if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe to the portrait guru it helps spread the word of the channel going forwards so i really appreciate it going back now into using the red colored pencil especially for the sides of or the face covering any last little gaps or patches of the white paper being pretty expressive with the background i just wanted to bring even more attention to that face so i'm using those angled lines to indicate and to lead the eye towards the face Colour pencil is brilliant just to show some subtle details like I'm doing here for the shirt and the collar. And here's the final drawing. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment me below. I'll love to hear from you and I really recommend you checking out this video which will help improve your own drawing skill.